Hey everyone. Welcome to this psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about a two-way ANOVA. A two-way ANOVA is a type of factorial ANOVA. In the last video, we talked about one-way ANOVA. The only difference between one-way and two-way ANOVA is that it's the number of independent variables. A one-way ANOVA has one independent variable while a two-way ANOVA has two. All ANOVAs are designed to test for differences among three or more groups. If you are only testing for a difference between two groups, then we can use a t-test instead. Now, let us take a look at an example to understand two-way ANOVA. With the following data, we are going to find if intelligence and gender has a different effect on a particular test. First, we have to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. There are three sets of hypothesis with the two-way ANOVA. The first null hypothesis is that gender will have no significant effect on the test score. The alternative hypothesis is that gender will have a significant effect on test score. This is like the one-way ANOVA for the row factor. The next set of hypothesis is that intelligence will have no significant effect on test score. And the alternative hypothesis is that intelligence will have significant effect on test score. This is like the one-way ANOVA for the column factor. The last set of hypothesis is that gender and intelligence interaction will have no significant effect on the test score. And the alternative hypothesis is that gender and intelligence interaction will have a significant effect on test score. Now we have to calculate our degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for intelligence value is that number of columns minus 1 that is 3 minus 1 equal to 2 and to calculate for gender number of rows minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 equal to 1 and for interaction we have to multiply intelligence and gender's degrees of freedom. If we do that we will get our value as 2. Next we have to calculate our residuals degrees of freedom value. To do that we have to substitute the corresponding values in this formula that is column value into row value into number of test scores minus 1 that is 3 into 2 into 3 minus 1 which gives us 12. We can get our total degrees of freedom from total number of test scores minus 1 that is 18 minus 1 which gives us 17. Taking our alpha value as 0 0.05, we can calculate our F critical value. With degrees of freedom as 2 and 12 for intelligence, that is 2 is the degrees of freedom for intelligence and 12 is the degrees of freedom for residual, we'll get a critical value for intelligence as 3.89. And for gender, the critical value is 1 and 12. That is for gender we got 1 and for residual we got 12. With that we get our critical value as 4.75. And for interaction we get our critical value as 3.89. With the given set of data, first we have to calculate the total for each columns that is with respect to the intelligence factor and calculate our row total with respect to male and female. That gives us a score of 47 for male and 61 for female. Next, we have to find the correction term. For that, we have to calculate sum of all the test scores scored by the student and square it. If we do that, we'll get this value. We have to divide that by the number of participants, that is 18. If we do that, we'll get our correction term as 648. With that, we have to calculate the sum of the squares of total. For that, we have to calculate the squares of the test score of each individual and sum it up 
and if we do that we'll get our value as 700 now we have to subtract this value with the correction term if we do that we'll get our value as 52 next we have to calculate the sum of the squares of the column if we square sum of each column values we'll get our total as 3902 and we have to divide it by the number of test scores in each column that is in our case 6 if we do that we'll get our value as 650.33 we have to subtract our correction term from this value if we do that we'll get our sum of the squares of column value as 2.33 next we have to calculate the sum of the squares of the row if we square the sum of the squares of our row we'll get our value as 5930 now we have to divide this value by the number of test scores in each row if we do that we'll get our value as 658.88 if we subtract our correction term with this value we'll get our sum of the squares of row value as 10.88 now we have to calculate the sum of the squares within groups value to do that we have to calculate sum for male column value separately and female column value separately if we do that we'll get our value as follows now we have to square those values and sum it up if we do that we'll get our value as 1604 if we divide it by 6 we'll get our value as 267.33 now we have to subtract this value with our correction term and sum of the squares of the column value and sum of the squares of the row value if we do that we'll get our sum of the squares within groups value as minus 393.88 with that we can calculate our residual sum of squares value to calculate our residual sum of squares value we have to subtract the sum of the squares of total value to get that we have to substitute these values if we do that we'll get our residual sum of squares value as 432.67 now we have to calculate the mean of sum of squares to do that for intelligence we have to divide the sum of the squares of column value by the degrees of freedom of intelligence value and if we do that we'll get our value as 0 0.5 and next the mean of sum of squares for gender we have to calculate the sum of squares of row value by the degrees of freedom of gender if we do that we'll get our value as 10.88 next for interaction we have to divide the sum of the squares of group value by the degrees of freedom of the interaction value and if we do that we'll get our mean of sum of squares value as minus 196.94 and finally for residual the residual sum of squares value by the degrees of freedom of residual if we do that we'll get our mean of sum of squares value of residual as 36.05 with that we can calculate our f value to calculate the f value for intelligence we have to divide the mean of sum of squares of the column value by the mean of sum of squares of the residual if we do that we'll get our f value for intelligence as 0 0.0138 and to calculate the f value for gender we have to divide the mean of sum of squares of gender by the mean of sum of squares of the residual if we do that we'll get our f value for gender as 0 0.3018 and next for interaction we have to divide the mean of sum of squares of interaction by the mean of sum of squares of residual if we do that we'll get our f value for interaction as minus 5.46 now that we have got all our f values we can equate these with our already found critical values as we see all our f values are less than our f critical value we can reject our null hypothesis i hope you like this video please share these videos with everyone who are preparing for this exam
and don't forget to subscribe thank you